Yeah, shared decision making is one of the biggest challenges that we face in modern cancer care today. And although the Institute of Medicine, now known as the National Academy of Medicine, has been saying we should be doing shared decision making really for about a decade or more now, it's something that most of us struggle with a lot in practice, and most of us have never actually formally been trained in how to do it. So it's like the old medical model of see one, do one, teach one, and a lot of us really kind of fumble through this, uh, doing it in a way that ends up being more of a superficial discussion about uh, risks and benefits of treatment, rather than a more substantive discussion about what's important to that person. So the palliative care team, which includes folks who have specialized training in difficult communication and eliciting people's goals and values and preferences, really can be helpful in facilitating shared decision making in cancer care, especially in those situations where we're quite uncertain about what the outcome is going to be. Maybe the prognosis looks statistically poor, but we're still hoping there could be a good outcome or maybe a risky treatment like stem cell transplantation. Uh, this is when we really need to elicit people's goals, values, and preferences, and then tell them more about the risks and benefits of treatment, but to map those up with what they say is important to them and then help figure out together what what the right treatment may be. So we've been finding in, in research uh, presented here at ASH by my colleague Dr. El Jawari at Mass General and then in some other studies in recent years that many patients with cancer actually don't want to be the primary decision maker about their treatment and yet most physicians don't really feel comfortable making treatment recommendations and we want to just tell people here are the risks and benefits, here are the options what do you want to do? Make a choice. That's actually not how many people want to make decisions. So we really have to flip this paradigm on its head and get more comfortable with diagnosing people's preferences, which is really kind of a foreign concept for many of us. How do we actually ask questions that elicit patients' preferences, goals, and values, and then plug those in with what we know about the disease that we're experts on, what we know about the treatment and the likely outcomes that we can really attest to with our medical expertise and help them figure out where that maps up with what's actually important to them as people. It's incredibly challenging, certainly easier to talk about than to actually do well, but it's an area that we very much need to focus on in the next several years to improve patient-centered care and truly personalized care where the treatment that's recommended and prescribed really matches up with the goals, values, and preferences of that person.